Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to do a good overview on the ASUS RS720A E12 RS12, and this is one of my favorite servers right now based on the AMD Genoa Proc. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the ASUS RS720A E12 RS12. Do us a favor, find anything that helps in this video, click that like, smash that subscribe. All right, here's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna do a good overview of this system as a whole. No, we're not gonna do any installs, unfortunately. We're trying to just do a good overview of the compatibility. So we're gonna talk about the CPUs, the RAM, the drives. We're gonna talk about the power supplies, the network cards, the supported operating systems, what GPUs are compatible. And if there's anything that you don't find in this video, hey, drop a comment down below for anything that you think is interesting. I'm sure some of the other users will find it helpful. All right, let's hop in. All right, let's start with the most important feature of this system, and that is going to be the fact that it takes two or dual AMD Genoa 9004 processors. Oh, 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 and my best Tim Allen home improvement voice, because that is just an incredibly uh, beefy server right there. I love the AMD Genoa. It's my favorite proc right now. Uh, it's top of the line and having a dual processor system. This is a uh, very, very powerful system to say the least. And that is going to be absolutely the most important and best feature of this ASUS. All right. So as I mentioned, this is the AMD Genoa. It's going to be uh, Zen 4 processors, which is the SP5 socket. You can max out at 256 cores and I'm getting ahead of myself, but goodness gracious, 256 cores. What a powerful box. So people ask us all the time, hey, what do you recommend? And we break down into three categories. We have our low end, our value, and our high end. The low end is going to be, generally speaking, lesser cores. Value is going to be the bang for your buck. And the high end is going to be basically just the best uh, performing and just the highest end processors in the series. So we'll go ahead and go over those and put up a list right now. My personal favorite are on the high end. I love the 9654 and the 9754. It's a 96 core and 128 core. And adding in two of the 9754s is where you can get to that 256 core that we mentioned. And again, just such an amazing processor, such beefy performance. It is one of uh, the, uh, the hottest systems out there as a whole, and we're a really big fan of it. And if you want any AMD Genoa's, I don't care if it's this specific ASUS, or if you want an ASRock, if you want a Super Micro, if you want anything else, uh, you want one that has a, a single processor, we build all sorts of types of AMD Genoa. Keep them in stock. You can do a quick turnaround depending on what you want. So please email us at sales at cloud Com. Let's talk about the RAM. All right, on the memory side, it takes DDR5 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside, which means there are 12 DIMMs per CPU. And even better, there's 12 memory channels per CPU, mean, which means there's one DIMM per memory channel, which is pretty cool as a whole. All right, as far as speeds, it takes one speed, which is 4,800. There's a number of different sizes. It goes low as a 16 gig, 32 gig, 48 gig, 64 gig. 96 gig or all up to 128 gig and that's going to be the max dim per slot which means you can get a max of three terabytes and there's two types of ram you have your standard r dim and your r dim 3ds so really just ecc register are going to be the modules that you can use and again the max you can get is three terabytes using 24 128 gigabytes whether that's with r dims or 3ds let's get going all right, that brings us to drives. There are 12 drives in front. You can see the large form factor or the 3.5 inch. So that means you can put in the large hard drives or you can put in solid state drives. And we'll get to all the different types here in just a second. What I wanted to point out of those 12 bays in front, four of them are set up for NVMe and SAS. Four of them are set up for NVMe, SAS, or SATA, and four of them are set up for SAS and SATA. So yeah, it's a kind of a weird configuration as a whole, but those are gonna be uh, the actual drives that you can put in based off of the interface. All right, let's talk about interfaces. So we talked about uh, the different types of things you can put in there. So again, you can put in uh, SSDs or hard drives. So on the solid state drive side, you can put in eight NVMEs and NVMEs are up to PCIe 5.0. So yes, you can put the latest and greatest in again, because this is such an awesome box. You can put in eight SATA SSDs or you can put in eight SAS SSDs. So on the SSD side, those are the uh, different interfaces. And again, you can put in hard drives. On the hard drive side, you can put in SATA or SAS. And on those, you can put in uh, uh, all the way across. But again, keep in mind eight and eight as far as uh, SATA for eight and SAS for eight. All right, let's talk about the speed. So for the NVMe SSDs, you're gonna get up to 16 gigabit per second. 
for the uh, SATA SSDs, 6 gigabit per second. For the SAS SSDs, 12 gigabit per second. And for SATA hard drives, you're going to get 7.2K RPM. That's the advantage of SAS hard drives where you can get 10, well, 7.2K also, or 10 or 15K, which will be the faster speeds. So those are going to be our speeds as a whole. So let's talk about sizes. So for the NVMe SSDs, first off, I should point out you can use U.2 or U.3, and you can get up to 15.36 terabytes for your NVMe SSDs, whereas with the SATA SSDs, you can only get up to 7.68 terabytes. The SAS SSDs, you can also get up to 15.36 terabytes. And then if you go to a hard drive, SAS or SATA hard drives, you can get 22 terabytes, which is really the big advantage of the hard drive as a whole since it is a large form factor chassis is that you can get in large drives. That's the advantage for a hard drive. Some of the points I wanted to go over while we're talking about drives, there are two M.2 slots, which are going to be 2280, so you cannot put in 22110s, so just make sure you use a 2280 drive. Uh, they're going to be PCIe 4.0, and you're going to have two M.2s. The other thing I wanted to mention is that if you are using SAS drives, do keep in mind, this isn't with just this system, this is with just pretty much any system as a whole, you do need to have a RAID controller, and with this system, you do need to have additional cabling, so if you are planning on using SAS drives, uh, make sure to note that in advance that you will need additional cabling and you will need a RAID controller. Which brings us to RAID. And no, I'm not talking about raids on Clash of Clans. Oh, that's for my Clash of Clans fans out there. But for RAID, we're going to do a little uh, chart right now that we're going to put up here uh, that's going to show a bunch of the, just the different LSI ones that are approved and on the spec sheet. I'm sure there's plenty of other RAID cards out there. Uh, that will be you know useful that you can use and if there's something that's not on our chart hey do us a favor drop a comment down below i'm sure other people will like to know uh, what is compatible but here's a good chart to start you off and one other important note there is a dedicated raid slot so do note there is a dedicated raid slot because when we talk about gpus here in a minute you're going to see that if you want to put gpus in this box which a lot of people will it can eat up your PCIe slot, so it is nice to use the dedicated RAID slot for your RAID. All right, next up, we're gonna put up our GPU chart. Now, this is the list of approved GPUs by ASUS. I'm sure there are probably some other GPUs that some of you guys are using out there. And hey, again, do us a favor. If you find something that's not on this list that you are using, drop a comment down below. I'm sure the other users will like to hear it. But you can put into four double width GPUs inside this box. Uh, again, if you do use that, that's gonna take up all of your PCIe slots, uh, which is nice to have that dedicated RAID port that we talked about, because uh, if you want to make this a just a, you know awesome GPU box as a whole, you could easily put in you know four A100s, four H100s, uh, plus a number of different other ones that you see on the chart. But obviously, the A100s and the H100s are a very very popular choice. Uh, the L40s are popular. The A4000s, the A5000s. There's a number of really really good ones that you can use. And again, if you need this as a GPU box, we do stock these. Uh, do email our team sales at cloudninjas.com. Let us know your configuration and we'd love to quote you. All right, let's talk about some of the expansion slots. So on the expansion slot side, again, if you are installing four GPUs, that's going to take up all of your PCIe slots, uh, again, except for the dedicated RAID slot, but there are up to nine PCIe Gen 5 slots plus the one internal RAID slot. Six of the PCIe Gen 5s are by eight and three are uh, Gen 5 also by 16. They're going to be the full height, full length. So that's going to be the first option of chassis. And that chassis option does not support any OCPs. And that's going to be the one you want for GPUs. There's another chassis option that's going to be uh, you know, two PCIe Gen 5 by 8 with one PCIe Gen 5 by 16 and one OCP 3.0. Uh, all those PCIe's are going to be full height, ha uh, excuse me, full height, full length. And then uh, again, the, the GPUs when you install them are going to occupy all of the expansion cards um, and the GPUs when you, if you want that SKU, you don't want the OCP 3.0 chassis. You want the other chassis because you'll have all the PCIe slots that you want. The OCP 3.0 chassis is going to have much less PCIe slots and is not going to be the uh, GPU chassis that you want. All right, let's talk network cards. You're going to have one built-in port for your BCM or your IPMI. You're going to have uh, two built-in 10 gig uh, RJ45 or four 1 gig RJ45, depending on uh, the option. And again, the GPU one isn't going to support an OCP 3.0, which is really important to note. As far as network cards, you can use PCIe 5.0. It is backwards compatible, and you can use 3.0 
or 4.0 as well. And again, for the non-GPU chassis, there's the OCP 3.0, uh, but realistically, most people are probably gonna be putting in uh, PCIe's and using this as a, a GPU chassis would be my guess. All right, so as far as interfaces, you can use RJ45, which is another way of saying Ethernet, SFP, SFP+, SFP28, QSFP28, and QSFP56. All right, as far as speed, you can use 1 gigabit, 10 gigabit, 25, 50, 100, 200, or all the way up to 400 gigabit. That is fast as lightning. All right, let's talk power. So you can have redundant 2000 watt platinum or redundant 2600 titanium. All right, so now we're gonna throw up our supported operating systems. All right, so we got Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 2022. We have VMware ESXi 8.0 in the various versions. We have Ubuntu 2004 and 2204. We also have a number of other uh, options, including Red Hat, but uh, again, listed up is all of the different supported operating systems. And there's something that you guys are using at home that uh, we don't have listed. Hey, drop a comment down below for, again, the supported operating systems that you like. Hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built Genoas, I don't care if it's a Zeus, ASRock, uh, if it's gonna be super micro, gigabyte, whatever the case may be, we'd love the opportunity to build servers for you. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by guys, take care.